Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning boys and girls, today we will be talking on drugs that produce vomiting and that can prevent vomiting. Vomiting and emesis is the same term. So, we will be talking on emetics and anti-emetics. So, we, we are talking on vomiting. How many of you, if I ask all of you, how many of you have ever vomited? Yes? How many of you have never vomited? Yes, I do not see any hand. That means, all of you might have vomited at some time. Maybe when you were child, maybe when you were infant, you might have vomited. How many of you have felt nausea? I see some hands. And how many of you had felt ratching? I do not see hand. But I think you must have ratched many times. So, now if you know the difference between nausea and vomiting and ratching, I think that is the first thing we should do. Vomiting means the actual expulsion of the gastric content through mouth and expulsion of the gastric content from the rectum or from anus is, is diarrhea. So, vomiting is the actual expulsion from gastric content from through mouth is vomiting. Now, this can happen, this is an active process and you might have seen the person who vomits, he just like this, that means his abdominal muscle contracts, the diaphragmatic muscles they contract, glottis closes and the with the force, the content from the stomach comes out, that is a vomiting. Now, many times you may see that when you, when your stomach is not content, there is no content, there is an act of vomiting, ah, but there is no vomiting process, there is no vomitus which comes out, that is called as retching. Many times you feel something that I, I am feeling like vomiting, but I do not vomit. I am too bored in a class. I see a person which I do not like. I see a very bad smell or it can be anything which precedes vomiting, but there is no vomiting. So, feeling of vomiting is called nausea. And incidentally, the vomiting, drugs for ratching, drug for nausea are same that is used for actual vomiting. Now, many times you might have experienced is that the patient does not contract, the intestine does not contract, perhaps sometimes when you eat too much, they, if this is the stomach, the stomach content automatically by, by mild movement, it comes to your esophagus and sometimes it comes to mouth, but there is no actual content. This is called as a regurgitation. So, if you are clear about these four terms, vomiting is the actual expulsion of the gastric content through mouth. 
nausea is a feeling of vomiting but may not be there may not be vomiting but it is a very discomfort situation regurgitation is many times when your content comes out in the esophagus and then it is does not come out of mouth sometimes it is a very painful very severe burning situation because the acid comes out ratching what you see now my next question is if you just tell me that have you ever seen a rat vomiting how many of you have seen rat vomiting how many of you seen mouse vomiting no because they can't vomit how many of you have seen a dog vomiting dog is a species which vomits like man how many of you seen cat vomiting how many of you have seen a man vomiting the message here is the vomiting is a is a reflex process is a protective mechanism which is present in higher species and only privileged species i would say which can vomit out the things and the small species they do not have the vomiting reflex how many of you vomit simultaneously if i say in a lighter vein i think all of us read throughout the year and on a 3 hours examination session we vomit our knowledge which we have acquired for years together but that's not the disease process now if i if i ask you that what are the causes of vomiting it can occur anything and many thing which can induce nausea and vomiting if i ask you can you name any physiological thing which can cause vomiting yes any of you your neighbor your mother your married sister who has a daughter if you watch carefully a during pregnancy there is a possibility that in the first trimester of pregnancy the there is a vomiting and that's called as a pregnancy vomiting that's much more common in the first trimester of pregnancy not in second not in third many times when a pregnant lady when a lady vomits her grand mother or her mother in law or her husband compliments now oh, you are vomiting for the first time during pregnancy uh, after marriage that means there is a likely to be good news but when this vomiting becomes severe and serious then it has to be controlled and many times when the vomiting is so severe it is called as hyper msis gravidarum and sometimes this vomiting becomes so serious and so severe that you have to give aggressive treatment and it can cause harm to the patient because harm to the pregnant lady because it can cause hyponatremia it can cause uh, severe contraction of the abdomen and abortion and things like that and therefore it requires treatment if you know that any drug or any medication during pregnancy is to be avoided because it can have a potential teratogenic effect but this is the case where hyperemesis gravidarum has to be taken care of now if i ask you what are the other medication so one is a physiological cause the other agents which can cause vomiting is is a drug several drugs 
can cause vomiting as their side effect. Any drug, if I say somebody ask you, some teacher ask you what are the side effect of the drug and if you say nausea, vomiting, coma, convulsion, death, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, coma, convulsion, death, you will not be wrong. Because any drug can cause nausea, it can cause vomiting, it can cause diarrhea, if you extreme doses it can cause coma, convulsion, death, but it does not mean that these are the common side effects. Many drugs they cause nausea and vomiting and the drug which are known to cause nausea and vomiting are all anti-malarial drugs, many cardiac drugs and drugs like anti-cancer drug. Now, if you just say an anti-cancer drug they are known to cause vomiting so severe that the person would prefer many times not to take and see cancer drug, but to suffer from cancer and then vomiting. And this is called as chemotherapy induced vomiting C I E or C I V chemotherapy induced vomiting is a so severe that itself is an entity and it has to be treated aggressively in all patient. Patient after surgery or patient after we can say anesthesia, they have anesthetic agents they cause severe nausea and severe vomiting and the risk of vomiting after surgery or during surgery is great because the vomitus can get aspirated into the tracheal chain or it can go into the respiratory tract and can cause severe problem because it can cause the infection, it can cause uh, all complications. So, this is called as post operative nausea and vomiting P O N V. Now, this is have you travelled in a fast train or bus in hill train on train or bus or have you travelled on a fast long height uh, elevators or lift. Have you ever seen patient uh, subjects travelling in the bus or ship suffering from vomiting, they vomit. So, this is because in the ear there is a, a labyrinthine apparatus and this labyrinthine apparatus gets stimulated and then this induces vomiting and this is an important disease not disease I would say this is important phenomena particularly on those who are driving a, a motor a long distance particularly on a hill those who are traveling on a ship those who are on a space journey particularly astronauts and those who are traveling again and down and up on the lifts. So, this is called as motion sickness, motion sickness. I would say that this is also not a disease. So, now you have seen the vomiting can occur because of the physiological condition, vomiting can occur because of physiological condition, vomiting can occur because of a disease because of a drug, because of a some abnormal movement, motion and the cancer treatment is by three ways. One is a chemotherapy, other is a radiotherapy and third is a surgery. So, the radiotherapy one of the major complication of radiotherapy is vomiting. The patient vomits so much after radiotherapy 
that when he comes to the radiotherapy table, he starts vomiting. A cancer patient, when he gets chemotherapy, means anti cancer drugs and vomits 10 times, 12 times, 15 times a day. When he comes to get radiotherapy, he vomits maybe 5 times, 6 times a day. So uncomfortable and he carries this memory that if I get chemotherapy, if I get radiotherapy, I will get vomiting. So, when next time when this patient comes to the hospital and sees the anti, sees the building of cancer, sees the, the radiotherapist or sees the chemotherapist without getting chemotherapy or radiotherapy, he starts vomiting or he starts feeling nausea. This is a very typical thing. This is called as anticipatory nausea and vomiting. A and V anticipatory nausea and vomiting. That means, without having actual thing, that means, if the patient is conditioned for such an unpleasant experience that is likely to face and this is called as anticipatory nausea and vomiting and the major reason here is is his anxiety. Now, once you understand that, now if I come back vomiting, what is this structure looks like? All of you are using the ball pen. Have you used pen? Have you used pen? I think you might have some of you might have used pen. So, this is like a nib of the pen and this structure is called as a calamus scriptorius. Calamus scriptorius, this is, is in the area postrema on the floor of the fourth ventricle. This is the floor of the fourth ventricle in the brain and this floor of the fourth ventricle has a structure which is like a nib like structure called as a calamus scriptorius and the lower part of the calamus scriptorius, this part is called as a, an area postrema. An area postrema is the area which is highly sensitive to all emetic agents. If anything is stimulates here, this can cause vomiting. The classical thing of this area postrema is, this is outside, outside blood brain barrier. That means, any pathology happening in the disease, whether this is an obstructive intestinal obstruction or whether it is a disease. If I remember, if I forget that a disease drugs, diseases lots of disease can cause vomiting. It can be enteric disease, it can be typhoid, it can be malaria, it can be cancer, it can be intestinal obstruction, where you have a disease as a symptom. Anything which uh, whether there is disease, whether it is a drug or whether it is a motion sickness, whether it is a radiotherapy, whether it is a chemotherapy, it will release some chemicals and these chemicals will come because they can cross the blood brain barrier. They, they, they are outside blood brain barrier. They come and stimulate the area prostema. Now, this area prostema, it has been found that this area prostema, this area prostema has multiple receptors. This has a receptor called as dopamine D2 receptor. This has a receptor of uh, what you call as a 5 histaminergic receptor, 5 HT receptors and primarily 5 HT3 type of receptors. This has also a receptor which is called as an encephalin receptor. This has a receptor 
which is called as a neurokinin NK1 receptor. This has a receptor of histamine H1, histamine 1 H1 receptors. This has a receptor of prostaglandin. That means, and this has a muscarinic receptor M1. Now, if you just see that area prostrema has a multiple type of receptors, has a multiple type of receptors, and each of these receptors, when get stimulated, they can induce vomiting. Vomiting by inducing chemoreceptor trigger zone, this is called as a chemoreceptor trigger zone, it triggers vomiting any chemical agent can trigger and this chemoreceptor trigger zone sends an impulse. This sends an impulse to what is called as a deeper lying vomiting center. So, this vomiting center sends impulse to deeper lying chemo the this, this area posterior or chemoreceptor trigger zone sends impulse to vomiting center in the brain and this vomiting center sends efferent impulse to muscles of the diaphragm glottis which closes and then there is an expulsion of food. So, this is a typical reflex system. Now, if I block all these receptors which are present which I showed in my previous slide that this has multiple receptors. If I block them all, that means, if you just surgically ablate this, if you put a surgical and you ablate this, you destroy this area, chemoreceptor trigger zone, the animal, it has been shown that it becomes refractory to vomiting, it does not vomit. So, is the sensitivity of this. Now, I can ablate most of these receptors by a drug called as a chlorpromazine CPZ or chlorpromazine. Chlorpromazine blocks chlorpromazine, this blocks dopamine receptor, this blocks 5 HT receptors to certain extent, this block muscarinic receptors and therefore, if a person does not respond to any drug, he is given chlorpromazine. In a child which does not respond to any other drug, he is given chlorpromazine. Chlorpromazine is a phenothiazine group of drug and because it acts a larger number of receptors, this was also earlier known as large actyl. That means, large number of action blocking several receptors at a time and it also causes sedation, but sedation is not required. Therefore, this drug is not a primarily anti-emetic. Now, if I just go to the next, now if I, if I just say this is, so the first group of anti-emetic would be the drugs which will block dopamine receptor D2 receptor. So, the first class of drug anti emetic if I say anti emetic the first or the most important group of drug would be dopamine blocker and dopamine blocker drug is I will just take you later is metoclopramide. metoclopramide. Metoclopramide is a drug which blocks dopamine receptor and therefore, it is the drug of choice because most of the vomiting are because of dopamine D2 receptor stimulation. The problem with the metoclopramide that if you give high dose of metoclopramide, this metoclopramide will also go into the vomiting center and it will go also into the other areas of the brain and in brain if the dopamine receptor is blocked, then you know that dopamine is involved in the movement disorder. So, it can cause tardive dyskinesia or 
it can cause Parkinson's like syndrome or extra pyramidal reaction. So, major side effect of dopamine antagonist metoclopramide in high dose it can cause extra pyramidal reaction in some and this EPS or extra pyramidal reaction in high dose of metoclopramide is seen primarily in children and old age. So, we developed a another drug of dopamine receptor and antagonist that is called as a drug which does not cross the blood brain barrier it remains here and will have not effect on D 2 receptor and therefore, will have less side effects. The other group of drug would be the drugs which will block the histamine receptor and therefore, histamine H 1 receptor antagonist will be another class of drug. The third class of drug would be muscarinic receptor antagonist because they will block. The fourth will be the neurokinin receptor antagonist and fifth would be the general blockade of this. So, in summary the anti emetics would be dopamine receptor antagonist number 2 histamine receptor antagonist muscarinic receptor antagonist neurokinin receptor antagonist in muscle and in morphine poisoning it is a morphine receptor antagonist and if it does not work then you give the receptors which blocks if you give the drug which blocks all the receptor. Now, if you just to recap what is vomiting is a protective reflex that serves to get rid of the content from the stomach. Nausea is, is a aversive stimulus. What is vomiting center? It is a deeper lying center which stimulates and sends efferent impulse to the diaphragmatic muscles into the muscles uh, of the of the glottis which closes and the it also lacks blood brain barrier. What is chemoreceptor trigger zone? It is the calamus scriptorius which has a lots of receptor 5 HT 3 receptors primarily dopamine D 2 receptors acetylcholine muscarinic M 1 receptors neurokinin receptors it has also cannabinoid receptor and particularly cannabinoid 1 B receptor 1 cannabinoid 1 receptor and and caffelin receptors or you can say opioid receptor. Now, therefore, logically if you block these receptors the person can have an anti emetic effect. This is just what we talked now that the vomiting center is a deeper lying structure and this vomiting sense gets impulse from all the type of receptors and this sends impulse from to the glossopharyngeal apparatus vagal stimulation. If you stimulate your vagus nerve then it also sends impulse to the vomiting center and person causes vomiting. You might have seen the patient who eats too much in a party and then want to still eat more they go to washroom and they put a gag on this they put a rub the vagus nerve and then they can vomit. If you have drunk too much of alcohol you put the vagus nerve stimulation and the person can vomit. Now, the drugs which can bond vomiting can cause vomiting at primarily the cytotoxic drug opioids, apomorphine, bromocryptine amatine these are the classical drugs which can cause vomiting. And if you remember the drug called digitalis which is used for heart the major side effect important side effect is vomiting is so much important that a person when he starts vomiting on digitalis it is considered that the patient is now adequately digitalized that means that is the end point to stop further dosing that is so important. Now, so that induce vomiting apomorphine, apomorphine is a very powerful dopamine receptor agonist and if you dopamine receptor agonist if you stimulate this, this will cause vomiting. Now, apomorphine 
has been used to induce vomiting sometimes. Epicac, this is obtained from uh, plant and this irritates gastric mucosa and then sends impulse to chemoreceptor trigger zone and causes vomiting. The vomiting induction is sometimes done, not now so frequently done in cases of poisoning what you call as a decontamination of the stomach. So, in that case the emergency kit either used to have apomorphine or epicac, but it is not used nowadays because this itself is a slightly painful process. So, if I just recap the vomiting drugs are 5 HT3 receptor antagonists because these drugs are considered to be much safer. The second is centrally acting dopamine receptor antagonist and then cannabinoid receptor antagonist also. Cannabinoid receptor antagonist if you just remember there is a cannabinoid B1 receptor present here. This cannabinoid receptor antagonist is not so commonly used because this also has a hallucinogen and other like property, but it is used particularly in cancer chemotherapy induced vomiting. NK receptor means neurokinin receptor antagonist, histamine receptor 1 antagonist and muscarinic receptor antagonist. So, primarily now if I see the most important use of 5 ST 3 receptor antagonist is in cytotoxic drug induced vomiting that is the most important. Neurokinin receptor antagonist is more useful in delayed onset because once you give chemotherapy the person vomits which is called as a early vomiting 6 hour 8 hour, but these patient vomit also second phase vomiting after 12 hours to 24 hours and even later that is called as a delayed nausea and vomiting. So, in cancer patient there are 3 vomiting. One is the early vomiting within 6 hours, the second is the delayed vomiting which happen up to 12 hours or 24 hours and third is anticipatory nausea and vomiting. And this is how the and muscarinic receptor antagonist and histamine receptor antagonist these drugs are primarily found to be effective in motion sickness. What are the 5 ST3 receptor antagonist? The specific 5 ST3 receptor antagonist was, is ondensetron, which is a prototype and which is one of the blockbuster drug used for now number of vomiting condition, but most effective in cancer chemotherapy induced vomiting or chemotherapy induced vomiting or what is called as a CIE. Grenisetron is a derivative of uh, is a similar to uh, ondensetron and dolensetron and polonosetron. These are four setrons which are extensively used. They have minor difference in their half life, minor difference in their side effect profile and if you remember only one or two drug I think that is sufficient for you. The mechanism of action we have just discussed they cause suppressed vomiting of action by 5 ST3 receptor antagonism at the chemo receptor trigger zone. This is available as tablet solution and most importantly as intravenous preparation and many times they are combined with anti cancer drugs intravenous route. So, that it takes care of vomiting and nausea even if it is not happening because it is likely to happen and it is given 30 minutes prior. So, as the person is primed with anti -hematic. Most common indication as I discuss is a chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting and also post operative nausea and vomiting. So, if I ask you tell me the drug which is useful for post operative nausea and vomiting the answer is. 5 ht 3 antagonist. The answer is either you give ondensetron intravenous or you give olanocetron, polanocetron by intravenous route. 
adverse effects are mild usually tolerated well constipation and diarrhea headache light headedness QT prolongation happens with dolecetron and therefore, dolecetron though it is effective it is avoided in patient with cardiac disorder. The other is dopamine receptor antagonists which primarily act on the chemoreceptor trigger zone and the drug is prochlorperazine, olanzapine and metochlorpromide. All these drugs they block D2 receptor. What was found that this blocks D2 receptor, but in high doses this also blocks 5 HT3 receptors. 5 HT3 receptors. And when this was found that in a high dose it also blocks 5 HT3 receptors, that was the reason of discovery of 5 HT3 receptors in area of ostrema. So, mechanism of action is primarily dopamine receptor antagonist. Adverse effect primarily in a high dose is extra pyramidal reaction, and of course, what is called as a Parkinsonism like syndrome. Now, why this happens? because you have blocked the dopamine receptor. Now, if there is a Parkinsonism patient in Parkinsonism patient what you are giving is the D 2 receptor agonist or dopamine receptor agonist. Now, if the patient of dopamine receptor agonist they vomit what do you give? You will definitely not give dopamine receptor antagonist because that will also block the desired dopaminergic action. In that case anticholinergic drug would be given. Metoclopromide mechanism is a dopamine receptor antagonist, but also blocks 5 ST 3 receptor antagonist major action used as a post operative nausea and vomiting and radiation sickness and also GERD gastroesophageal reflex disorder. When this the food comes out and because this in addition to that has a gastrokinetic effect. It improves the motility of the GIT and therefore, the content of the stomach and the intestine travels faster. So, metoclopramide acts by two mechanism, three mechanism one is primarily blocks the dopamine receptor. It also blocks blocks to certain extent to minor extent 5 HT 3 receptors and it also has a gastrokinetic effect. Adverse effect in high dose is extra paramolar effect primarily in older age and in children. It has a low ceiling effect that means, if there is a severe vomiting it does not affect much. Cannabinoid receptor, there are two cannabinoid receptors are used, one is a dronabinol, other is a nebulon. They are not so commonly used, but they are used primarily in cancer patient and they block the C B1 receptor in chemoreceptor trigger zone, and this is used for primarily for cancer chemotherapy vomiting, and this also appetite stimulants where appetite stimulation is required is in cancer patient, because in cancer patient the appetite is already deeply suppressed they are anorexic. And therefore, even though at the cost of then they can cause some abuse potential it is given, because at the terminal stage abuse potential is not a matter of much concern you give cannabinoid and uh, C B 1 receptor. So, that it stimulates appetite it reduces nausea. The next one is neurokinin NK1 receptor antagonist. This is a, the problem of with this drug this is a quite expensive and therefore, this is not used if used only specifically for those patient who are very severe vomiting after chemotherapy that is apripitant. This is a commonly used apripitant. The other drug is uh, fossa pretend, rola pretend and new pretend. So, this is a pretend we just see 
pitens, apripitent, fossa pitent, and they are used as a parenteral. There is a much not much difference between all these pitens, but they are longer duration and they effective in delayed phase of cytotoxic vomiting and this is prescribed with usually 5 ht 3 antagonists and also sometimes dexamethasone. So, dexamethasone is classically not considered as antiemetic, but is used as an adjuvant antiemetic in cancer patient. Histamine receptor antagonist as I said that this is the vomiting center histamine receptor is also present and this is primarily present in vomiting where there is a because of some allergic reaction or in motion sickness. So, this is a cyclizine, maclizine, promethazine and diphenhydramine. Now, mechanism of action of this is a vestibular apparatus that is in air this is a vestibular apparatus and that receptor is primarily blocked. The major problem with this is, is sedation and therefore, they cannot be given in a patient who is a driving or in a subject who is a driving or doing some finer work on the machine. Scopolamine as I said that this is the vomiting receptor muscarinic receptor 1 is also present and therefore, muscarinic receptor antagonist the drug is scopolamine or hyoscine. Now, if you give hyoscine then the problem is that this causes drowsiness and therefore, it is not advisable to give drowsiness inducing drug in patient who is driving and therefore, a transdermal patch is now available which is put here and the patient can walk patient can travel a small amount of drug will be continuously released and the patient will be happily moving around. All the drug all the side effects which are because of anticholinergic mechanism dry effect of mouth visual disturbance they are known to happen there. The other drugs which are primarily not classical antiemetic, but used in vomiting cases particularly regurgitation is cesapride and tegacerod. They are 5 H T 4 receptor antagonists. They promote gastrointestinal transit and enhance the gastric camptine and therefore, indirectly prevents vomiting. So, if I say the drug for G E R D what are the drug is cesapride, mosapride, tegacerod steroid dexamethasone is by preventing suppression peritumoral inflammation and prostaglandin production as I said the prostaglandin receptors are also present. So, this is the steroid which is used, but not as a primarily. If I ask you what should be the best drug for anticipatory nausea and vomiting. If you just a cancer patient you are taking a cancer patient to a cancer hospital, if you are a cancer patient to vomit to surgery what do you give? You give them anti anxiety drug and that also reduces what is called as anticipatory nausea and vomiting lorazepam and alprazolam. So, lorazepam alprazolam are not classical antiemetic, but they are used only as anticipatory vomiting preventing mechanism. So, if I just summarize vomiting is a defense mechanism you sometimes need to induce it in cases of poisoning by epimorphine or epicac or by stimulation of your vagus nerve. Majority of the vomiting are stimulation of dopamine receptor 5 ht receptor histamine receptor cholinergic receptor neurokinin receptor and encephalin receptor. Therefore, the drugs would be antagonist to these. Drugs for chemotherapy induced vomiting are 5 ht 3 receptor antagonists and also histamine receptor antagonists. Drug for motion sickness is primarily cholinergic receptor antagonists and you give transdermal patch. So, that nausea 
and vomiting is prevented for long and the patient does not go to drowsiness. The vomiting because of uh, dopaminergic agonist drug in Parkinsonism should never be treated with anti dopaminergic drug because this will also block the dopamine mechanism of action in Parkinsonism should be treated with anti cholinergic drug. Many times the dopamine anti emetic drugs they can cause sudden Parkinsonism like syndrome patient get into panic there is no need to get panic the only medication should be give anti cholinergic drug. I hope that you will able to treat the patient of vomiting in future in addition to these drugs when the patient is repeatedly vomiting what is important thing to maintain is is the electrolyte and balance and the proper hydration. Giving hydration by mouth if a patient is vomiting is not a strategy good strategy you have to give IV fluid because the vomiting in intestinal obstruction giving anything by oral route is a risky proposition should never be done. Thank you very much.